So previously we talked about uh, turning corners like on racetracks or on off ramps or what have you where um, the ground was flat. Really the ground isn't typically flat. In fact, if you take a look at a, I'll try and draw this somewhat carefully. If you look at a, a typical racetrack, I'll try to make it sort of like a shape of a hockey rink with these quarter circles on the corners. So we could talk about the radius of curvature at each corner. You know, there's this imaginary full circle there. Um, as you go into the corners, people have to think about what's going to happen for the centripetal force. Because sure, the cars like to go fast along the straightaway, but what's going to happen at the corner? If they have to slow right down, it really makes a race kind of jerky. You know, you have, you'd speed up! and then you slow down and take the corner. And you speed up, and you slow down and take the corner. And realistically, that does happen a little bit, but we want to minimize that, or at least uh, the people in Daytona and all these indie race car type places wanted to minimize that. So we've talked, also talked previously about inclined planes. And so inclined planes is where they went with it. They said, well, what if, thinking about an inclined plane, we talk about having what we, we like to call a banked curve. And so I'm going to tell you what this is a picture of. This is a cutaway view. Well, that's not a good spot to do it. It's a cutaway view of right there. Sorry. And on either side of this track, it's actually banked as you go into a curve and as you come out of a curve. So along the curves, you have these banks. What a bank is, it's just an angled track. So I'm going to give it an angle theta. So I'm just going to focus on the right-hand side. And this is a car that's sitting on the track that is banked. And, and an embankment is a hill. So a banked track is a hill. Uh, uh, the track is built into a hill shape. It's, it's uh, inclined. But we can think of it as an inclined plane just for now. As we think back to what we've talked about previously with inclined planes, I know that at this particular moment, there's a force trying to pull this car downhill, and there's a force that's trying to pull this car directly into the surface, and there's a force, well, that those two would be arrived at from, called the FG, force due to gravity. And what we call these two other forces previously were force due to gravity acting perpendicular to the surface, in this case the road, and force due to gravity acting, we called it with the symbol parallel, looking like an equal sign on its side, parallel to the road. Okay. And so we could calculate values like Fg equals mass times acceleration due to gravity. We could say Fg perpendicular, as we, we figured out earlier. Fg perpendicular is actually uh, Fg times cosine of the theta, the angle of incline for the, this ramp shape. Fg parallel was Fg times sine of theta. And another force that's <coughs> going to be present if we're talking about a car that's uh, traveling in a circle is the static, static friction force that we talked about previously with a, a flat track. And the static friction force previously pointed towards the center of the circle, but this time the static friction force would point down the hill. In other words, the static friction force, the friction between the car and the banked track, is keeping the car from sliding sideways off the track and flying into the stands or, or whatever happens at these speedways. You've probably seen these things before, right? Where the car uh, maybe goes too fast in the, into a curve and it flies off the banked track and then you get all kinds of trouble or it catches air and it tumbles through the air and, and causes mayhem. But the static friction would, would keep it from sliding off the track. And so I'm gonna label it as static friction. FS. And we know that it's static friction because it's preventing a slide. Some people think it's kinetic friction. You know, kinetic friction is what something feels when it is sliding, when something slides sideways, right? Static friction is the friction that something feels when it's not sliding. So you might be tempted to say, I want to use kinetic friction because cars, the car is in motion, so it makes sense that it should be kinetic friction. Kinetic friction isn't the friction that's experienced by moving objects. It's the, the friction that's experienced by sliding objects. 
And you'd probably agree that the last time you were in a car, your car didn't slide all over the place. It had traction. Well, unless you were driving like ridiculous donuts <laughs> on a winter day, it had traction. So if your car isn't sliding sideways, then it's experiencing static friction, which keeps it from sliding sideways. The, was that a question that people asked or in their minds that they didn't sort of say out loud? Yeah, okay, I, I, I forgot to mention it. That's something that should be mentioned. Does it make sense now why we use static friction instead of kinetic friction though? Okay, nods of the head, sounds good. Okay, so now I wanna talk about static friction then. The next thing we can calculate is Fs, which is mu s times F normal. And in this case, F normal, which is perpendicular to the surface, acts perpendicular to the surface, F normal would have an equal magnitude to Fg perpendicular, as we discussed previously with inclined planes. So we could rewrite Fs as being mu s times Fg perpendicular, or just expand it out and say mu s times Fg times cosine of theta. Okay. Now, I haven't even po uh, posed a question. The question I'd like to pose is, find an expression for centripetal force for a banked curve. Okay. Now, right now, what we have is forces that are going down this ramp. So let's let's see if we can focus on finding the, finding an expression for the forces that are pulling the car down the ramp, or at least keeping it from sliding up the ramp as it takes the corner. Yes, Alan. Wait, uh, no, no. So um, I want to get the the net, F net in the parallel direction first, and then I'll get to that. Okay. So we want to find. F net in the parallel direction. And in this case, the only forces that are acting in the parallel direction would be the static force and the force through gravity acting in the parallel direction. So Fg parallel plus Fs. And I want to expand those out so we have the full expression with all of the variables showing. So Fg parallel could be written as Fg times sine of theta. plus Fs, Fs could be written as mu s times Fg times cosine of theta. And I know that Fg could be rewritten even further, expanded to be mass times acceleration due to gravity, but I'm, I'm going to stop there. The thing is, F net parallel, maybe I'll redraw this picture. I'll redraw it, redraw it in orange. And I'll draw the car in green this time, just so we have a, like a photo negative. We could at this point figure out this value. If we had the theta value, the mu value, and the mass of the object, we could definitely figure out that value. But that is not the centripetal force value. That's not F net in uh, circular. F net circular, the centripetal force value, points towards the center of the circle that the object, uh, in, in the plane that the object is sitting in. Can you see that this force here would point towards the center of the circle. This force here points down underground. If that orange ramp, oh sorry, the orange ramp, if the orange ramp is sitting on the surface, the Fg parallel or the F net parallel points at some point underground. This arrow here, going out parallel to the ground, points at a point at the center of the racetrack. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So by Z pattern, and you, you got to where I was going next, by Z pattern you can see that this angle here is theta. So if I wanted to find FC, some people want, may want to call it uh, F net in the X direction, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sidestep that. I'm going to say it is F net in the X direction, but it is FC really, because it's in the same plane as the object. FC is equal to F net parallel times cos theta. Now that's kind of a squish and ugly way to write it. 
So I'm going to write it out in full over here. I'm going to say FC is equal to open brackets FG times sine theta plus mu s times FG times cosine theta and that is F net parallel all times cosine theta. And as ugly as that might look if you were maybe a, a year younger, it's not really ugly. We have a bunch of variables here that we know. We know, or we could know. We could easily know theta. We could easily know, oh, here's all the thetas. We could easily know the static friction coefficient between the tires and the road. We could easily know the mass of the object and therefore calculate Fg. And so we could easily find the centripetal force for an object that's traveling around a banked curve. But on, on first inspection, if you don't really know what you're looking at, that looks kind of intimidating. And so I just wanted to show you how to get it. Does anybody have any questions about how we got there? It, it, is, uh, it isn't anything new. The only thing that's new here is that we took two topics that we've talked about before and whacked them together into a new problem. We took inclined planes and we took circular motion and we just made them into a combined problem. But it's nothing really new. So I, I just want to show that um, we could put them together and, it, and it shouldn't be too intimidating.